in an ideal world, we would do a census and we would find out exactly what was going on with absolutely everybody in the population or everything in the population. But in reality, we have to use a sample. Now, why is this important and why should we consider it, apart from the fact that it's in the specification? It's because statistics can lie and people can use statistics deliberately to make factual conclusions that actually aren't true. So you can take your sample and you can get some data and you can say the data does show this and it does show that, that is true, that's not a lie. And then the assumption is, the implicit assumption is that the population um, is the same as the sample, that the, that the sample is representative of the population. And that may or may not be true. And it's very, very important to understand the effect that sampling can have on the efficacy of the conclusions that you make based on your analysis from your sample. So we've got these five types of sampling techniques and this space here, normally I put a question in there, but I've left this free because this is the sort of topic where you might come across things like sentences and millions of ways of, of phrasing these things. And you might come across something that you want to add to these notes in the future. So this space here is for adding a particular question that you that came up that you didn't know how to answer or some more information about one of these things or anything like that that you want to use for for this particular topic, which is very content heavy, not normal maths. So we've got these three here, which are random. We've got simple random sampling, stratified sampling, which uses simple random sampling once you've done some stuff and systematic sampling. And all of these are random. And the advantage that that has is that it reduces bias. That's an, an advantage of all three of these. Actually, let's do that line across there so that you can see that they join up. So this is random, this is random, this is random, this is non-random, this is non-random. The disadvantage of a, well, it's not a disadvantage, but something that makes it less convenient and possibly more expensive and more time consuming is that you need a sampling frame. All three of these require a sampling frame. And a sampling frame is obviously, as you know from the other video, it is a, a numerical list of everybody in the population. And obviously you will see from the way that these are set up and how they work, that that list is required. And that list could cost time, money, and could be inconvenient. So whilst it is good that we reduce bias and we maybe get a better representative sample, especially if we use stratified sampling, that's great. But, but these things, which are actually important in real life, non-random sampling techniques include opportunity sampling and quota sampling. And the disadvantage was well, obviously these the other way around. It, you get more bias, but you don't need a sampling frame. So therefore they're easier, they're more convenient and that then they might be cheaper. Okay, this is unlike any other maths topic in that there's gonna be words all over the place. So what I'm gonna do is talk through each of these things and then I'm gonna fill it in, but I'm gonna speed up the video. So you should just pause it and then you write down your notes and um, whatever you want to write in, in here. Right, the most basic, simple random sampling. What you do is you get your sampling frame and then you use a random number generator. So you could use a calculator, a computer, or you could put like all the numbers in a hat, like a lottery and pull out a number. And then whatever number that is, that person is in the sample. And that's how you create your sample. So two important features of a simple random sample. A good thing is that each item in the sampling frame has an equal chance of being selected because you're using a random number generator. So we're reducing bias. The other thing is that the selections are independent. So if I choose, like if I've got the list like that and this person is in the sample, then this person is just as likely to be in the sample as this person here. It, they're completely independent of each other. So why would we not do it? It's completely unbiased, which is great. It's cheap and easy, which is great, but 
It's not as simple as that. If your population is spread over a large area, so say our population is everybody in the world and we list um, them all by some sort of numbering system and then we get our random sample, then it might be really hard to find those people. So if your population is spread over a large area, then you've got this sample that's going to be great, but you've got to go and find those people and ask them stuff. So it might be, it might not actually be easy. We might lose some convenience here if the population is spread out. Now, maybe we'll come back to stratified sampling. Systematic sampling is another relatively simple one. We take our sampling frame and instead of picking random ones, we just pick every nth one. So every third person or every 15th person or every 30th person or not, I shouldn't say person, sampling unit is the proper term because it might not be people, it could be anything. So it's really, really simple. It's quick and easy and it's unbiased. Well, is it unbiased? Maybe I should do that because it's cheap and easy, but is it? So this one is unbiased, or is it, which I'll come back to, and it's cheap and easy and quick. It's good for quality control. So on a factory line, that might be what you do for your sampling. You take every sixth one and do a quick check of the quality. So it might be a quality control, it might be what you use in quality control situation. So the big but that comes with this, other than it requiring a sampling frame, the big but is what if there is a pattern in the data? So what if our, our assembly line is going along and there's a particular machine that every fifth model, it makes a little error. Now, if we happen to choose every fifth and it's the ones that have the error in, then we'll think they're all flawed and they're actually not. And if we take every fifth one but don't land on the ones that are broken then we'll think that none of them are broken and actually a fifth of them are so it's gonna it's gonna completely flaw the results so this is unbiased provided that there is no pattern in the population right stratified sampling is the most difficult one really to consider. It's useful when you've got a population which can be divided into mutually exclusive groups called strata and it's really good for proportional representation. It guarantees proportional representation. So we're trying to get a sample which is representative of the whole population so that our conclusions that we make from our sample about our population are valid. Now, if we've got a population which is, say, one third very, very old people, but our sample, just the way it's taken because it's random or systematic, our sample doesn't contain a third really, really old people. It only contains like a tenth really, really old people. Then their opinions, if they're all similar, their opinions, they wouldn't be represented properly. So what stratified sampling does is it says, OK, if we've got groups of people who are likely to behave differently or groups of sampling units within the population who are likely to behave differently when we sample them, then what we're going to do is create a sample that reflects and represents that population. So what you do is you decide your categories that are mutually exclusive. You can't be in two different categories. And then you work out how much of your sample should be be made up of that particular strata. So you do the size of the category in the population, in population. You divide that by the size of the population. And then what that gets you is a percentage of people who are this particular category. And then you multiply that by your sample size that you want. And that tells you how many people of that category you want in your sample. Then once you've done that, you just do simple random sampling within each category. Why would we not do this then? This sounds way better than this or this. Well, we might not have categories in their population. So if we're doing quality control, if everything coming off this factory line is identical, there aren't any categories to split the things into. Everything is the same. So that wouldn't be appropriate. And that would be one reason not to do it. Another reason not to do it is that it is extra work and detail. And whenever you make your 
sample better in one sense, less biased, more representative, you're probably going to cost yourself more time, more money, and it will be less convenient. And that will be the disadvantage. I'll tell you what I didn't put on here, which I ought to put on here, is summary. It's like headings. Summary of the sampling technique, advantages and disadvantages. But I really think with this particular topic, once you understand how these work and that these are the things to consider when you're talking about advantages and disadvantages, then you don't have to memorize these anymore because they kind of make sense. That's that's the aim to get to is not that you've memorized these words. It's more that it makes such complete sense to you that you're able to explain the advantages and disadvantages and see which method is being used in a particular situation or which would be most appropriate. So, for example, quality control off a factory line, we would use systematic sampling, something that is dependent on the person's age or gender. We might use stratified sampling to make sure that we've got a representative sample. Right, last two. Opportunity sampling is like, it's just silly, really. It's quick and easy. And all you do is, it's totally dependent on the researcher. You give the researcher complete control over the sample. So it's highly biased, very biased. It's, it's just silly, really. But I suppose it would give you, it would give you an idea of what's going on. It's not random. And you're not very likely to get a representative sample. Not very likely at all. I mean, it would depend on the researcher because they're in control, but it's not likely. So how does it work? You literally take the sample from the population that is the most convenient. You go totally for convenience. Sometimes it's called convenient sampling. So you you say to the, the researcher, I want you to get data from N, P, N people or N sampling units, and they go off and they literally just choose what's gonna be make their life the easiest. Last one, quota. So this one is often used in quality control. And this one is often used when people are doing market research. So this is a sort of quality control one. This is more of a market research one. So imagine somebody in the street asking questions. Now it's a bit like stratified sampling in that somebody will have given the researcher a quota of how many from each group, each strata of the population they need to ask. The difference between stratified sampling and quota sampling is that then within that strata, it's essentially opportunity rather than within that strata it being simple random sampling. So I say to the researcher, I want you to ask 20 old people and 30 people under 20 and something like that. So I give them a quota for each of the non overlapping groups, mutually exclusive groups within the population. And then I say, off you go, and then they can do whatever they like. So it's often used in market research. It's easy to implement, obviously. And the other big advantage of this one is that non-responses aren't a problem. One of the problems that you have in general with sampling is that you, so say you use any of these methods and you send out your survey and you're really pleased with yourself because you've got like a really good unbiased representative sample and then a third of them just don't send the survey back. You don't get any information from them or something goes wrong when you're measuring them and you just don't get the information. Then these can be a problem because then you've got to go back and choose some more people or sampling units to fit in. Whereas with this, that that's not an issue. If somebody says they don't want to be involved or you you can't measure the thing or whatever it is, then you just like you're doing opportunity now, you're doing what's most convenient. So you just pick another person. And it does allow you to make a, a generalized conclusion about the different groups because you've collected your data like with the stratified sampling you've collected the data about the different groups separately so that means that you can compare these and these the types of the population quite easily but of course just like with the opportunity because essentially you are using opportunity it's biased it's dependent on the interviewer on the researcher and also, the other thing about stratified and quota is that it assumes that you can actually divide the population into groups.
Last thing that I wanted to point out with simple random sampling is to be aware of what happens if when you're using your random number generator you get the same number that you already got. It seems really ridiculously simple but it is exactly what you'd think. If I pick out the number four and then I get four again then I just ignore that and then I keep going and get another one. So there is one thing about that that could be a disadvantage, really unlikely, but it does assume the population is large enough to sample without replacement. So it does assume that. So what we basically want to do is sample without replacement so that I don't get the same sampling unit coming back into the sample. I can use sampling random number generation then sampling with replacement and then if I get the same sampling unit out again just don't put it back in or I can do it without replacement but if I do it without replacement I do need a large population. It's an extra little thing that you might want to mention. Right, very last thing, because I know this is long and there's a huge amount of information, is this list is the most important. When you are commenting and writing sentences, this is what you should consider. So go through those five in your head and try to say whether or not that's an advantage or a disadvantage and reference it and how important it is. Ditto, 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 ditto. And that is the most likely way that you're going to pick up all the marks for this sort of difficult explain type question.